Very good, sir. I'm recording now. Thank you. Okay, so good evening, everybody. Welcome and thank you very much to the future class of 2026 at Governor Livingston High School, our newest Highlanders. Uh, welcome to our eighth grade course selection presentation this evening. I am Robert Nixon. I'm the principal of Governor Livingston High School, and I'll be joined this evening by Dr. Ashley Janosko, who is the Berkeley Heights Public School District's Director of School Counseling. Uh, together, we're going to do our best to try and uh, talk you through the course selection process um, for your child's freshman year at Governor Livingston High School. Um, before we get started, uh, I'd like to thank some important people that do a lot to really help us uh, in the course selection process, in particular, um, the principals at our middle schools do so much to help us out. Uh, Mr. Stephen Hopkins, who is the interim principal at Columbia Middle School, we appreciate his help and support. And Ms. Susan Jenks, who is the principal at uh, Deerfield School. Um, we'd also like to thank the, our newest addition to the counseling department at Deerfield School, um, Ms. Brittany Baldwin, uh, for her help in the process as well. I know there's a lot of information that we go through here, but we hope um, that we bring all of you through that um, in a way that makes the scheduling process a little bit easier for you and, and answers some of your questions. Um, also like to thank Mr. Mike Scarra, who is with us this evening. Uh, he is the Berkeley Heights Public Schools um, Coordinator of Technology, and he will be somewhat playing DJ a little bit for us here tonight and making sure that this presentation uh, gets recorded in the event that you wanna go back and listen to this presentation, but also um, uh, if anybody happens to miss the presentation and would like to catch up at another time. I believe we also have, uh, if she's not with us, uh, I'd love to like to thank uh, Ms. Gina DeLauro, our eighth grade counselor, who will be working with your students from Columbia Middle School as well, who um, we're gonna do our best to make sure that we get them uh, all ready to go here. So Dr. Janosko, first things first, let me move this along, here we go. So first things first, as we go through our agenda tonight, and, and one thing I'd like to point out as we do so. Um, we do have a Q&A feature available here. Uh, while I'm speaking and presenting, Dr. Janosko will do her best to try and navigate your questions um, through the Q&A board. While Dr. Janosko is presenting, I'll do my best to try and answer those questions there. Um, if there's any questions that we can't answer for one reason or another, we'll certainly get back to you with those questions. Um, but you can also feel free to email us our, uh, our contact information is available on uh, the high school, on the Governor Livingston High School, but also on the school district website. Um, and then we'll also have just a general Q&A session uh, available at the end. So uh, we ask if any questions you ask during the presentation, try and make them targeted specifically to what we're talking about. If you have a global question about something uh, that you're wondering about try, and about, try and hold that to the end because we might cover it as we go through the presentation for you here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to try and give you a big picture overview, try and prepare you to take a look at what you might want your child's four-year academic plan to be. Um, as you know, in ways of doing that, we're going to go through what the specific high school course requirements are. We're going to talk specifically about what a freshman schedule will look like at Governor Livingston High School. We'll talk you through the various um, things and events that will happen over the course of the scheduling process. And, and dive in a little bit deeper into the timeline so you know what to expect about when you'll have a schedule finalized and different things like that. Um, and then finally, we'll talk a little bit about what we anticipate the graduation requirements will be for the class of 2026. At this time right now, um, that we only have through class of 2025, but we think we're gonna be getting a little bit of consistency coming, uh, coming to all of us uh, very soon. So first things first, let's get to the basics. For all students, uh, regardless of what academic path you, uh, you choose to take, there is a basic minimum uh, credit requirement to graduate from high school. The number of credits are 120 credits, but it's not just a total of 120 credits. Those 120 credits are very specific. Um, specifically, as you see on this chart here, there are two subject areas. You have English as well as physical education and health, which you need to take four years of, 20 credits in each. Then you'll have mathematics, social studies, and science, each that you will take three credits of. You'll notice that there's 18 credits there for science. It's because students are required to have three years of a lab science uh, to graduate from high school. Um, minimum requirement for world language is 
one year and five credits, but then you'll see they'll have to, uh, by the time they complete high school, they'll have to have 2.5 credits in financial literacy, five credits in visual and performing arts, and two and a half credits in 21st century and careers for a total of 120 credits. As you see here, similar to what a lot of you may be used to, this is what our schedule looks like at Governor Livingston High School. It is a rotate and drop schedule. You'll see students morning will rotate as they go through the four days of the rotation, uh, but the afternoon will rotate as well. If you take a look at that hour lunch block that we have in the middle, whenever a science class meets up to a lunch period, whether it be in the uh, morning or in the afternoon, whenever it, whenever it is either right before or right after lunch, half of the lunch period will become the student science lab. One of the things that we really like about this schedule is it gives our Highlanders an opportunity to create a great transcript and have great opportunities to explore their interests. Um, for example, um, students who may wish to participate in athletics or other after school extracurricular activities, such as band or perhaps um, any of our theater programs, um, they can participate in the various clubs and activities, usually during the school day, during their lunch period, um, which is a great opportunity for our students to have a really well-rounded experience and um, really kind of explore what it is they might be interested in as they move on. Um, to their life after high school. One of the things that we offer at our high school to encourage students to try and kind of challenge themselves, as we say on the bottom, put, put their best foot forward, we do offer grade weighting. So if a student takes an honors course, um, it has an additional 0.5 value in terms of determining a student's GPA. And uh, if a student takes an advanced placement course, they get an additional 1.0 value added to their GPA. Um, we do report both a non-weighted and weighted GPA on a student's transcript. And as with a lot of very competitive high schools, Governor Livingston High School does not rank our students. Um, we do utilize weighted GPA for consideration into our various honor societies. And we have a lot of honor societies at this time. So um, there's different ways to recognize uh, a student's great performance, regardless of where a student's strength lies. As you can see here, we created a, a sample uh, student transcript and we included a lot of different things here for, uh, for you to look at. We have, um, we have elective courses, we have um, honors level courses, we have academic level courses, and we have advanced placement, advanced placement level courses. And you can kind of see how each of the various courses we offer here at Governor Livingston High School will appear on a student's final transcript. Um, something we like to point out often too, is you see just the final grade is the grade that appears on a student's transcript. So that is the average of the marking periods as well as final exams put in, uh, percentages of each of those. And you'll see in that top center area right there, as I mentioned before, we do share the weighted GPA as well as the unweighted cumulative GPA. One of the newest things that we've introduced to our students um, is a STEAM Academy. Uh, students, as they go through high school, can get, an uh, get a STEAM endorsement uh, by the time they graduate. And there is some various courses that they need to take in order to be a part of that. If you think the, the STEAM Academy at Governor Livingston High School is something that you would be interested in, we highly encourage you to mention it to your guidance counselor and mention it to the counselors from Governor Livingston as you go through the scheduling process. They can help answer some of your questions, but also point you in the right direction to make sure you're taking the courses that you want to, should the STEAM Academy be something that you are interested in. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm going to talk a little bit about the timeline of events um, as it relates specifically to your child and their course selection process for their freshman year at GO. So first, I'm going to begin with what's kind of already been happening. Beginning December 17th through January 17th, so really the second marking period, students uh, have had an opp opportunity to meet with their, their teachers, and teachers have placed academic recommendations based off of student performances in PowerSchool. 
Now, uh, my hope is that you've been receiving communication since December with regards to the course selection process, as well as this process of teacher recommendations. Um, then on January 19th, the high school counselors virtually visited the middle schools and did a presentation on the program of studies. So our uh, updated 2022-2023 program of studies um, and shared videos with your students that shared a little bit about uh, this information that you're hearing this evening in terms of expectations, curriculum, uh, different course offerings, and answered any questions that the students had um, as it relates to uh, next year. It was really a, a, a great beginning to start get, getting them thinking of the course selection process, as well as really encourage them to have conversations with their teachers uh, regarding recommendations for placement. Currently, um, actually at Deerfield last week and this week at Columbia Middle School, the counselors, um, Mr., Mrs. Del Cortivo and Mrs. Delaro, are going into science uh, and social studies classrooms and doing elective course selection processes. So what that means is students, your students are sitting in a classroom and they're reviewing our program of studies. They are going through a lesson of, um, again, what the different courses are offered, what are some different electives, they can ask questions and they're actually inputting their interests. So they're looking at the teacher recommendations actually in power school that their teachers have made and then they're selecting um, academic courses and elective courses. Mind you, that process um, does conclude um, before they meet with their high school counselors. January 25th is here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we're happy to, to have you all. And then the first, uh, next week, February 3rd, 4th, and 7th, the high school counselors will be meeting individually with all of your students. And again, hopefully you received an email correspondence that invited you to join your child virtually at that meeting. So the meeting is going to include a high school counselor uh, going through the curriculum and courses that are offered for freshman year, what your child has been recommended for, um, and asking them questions such as their interest, um, post-secondary planning interest, if they have any potential career interests that they would like to explore, and having a dialogue with them about exploring different electives that we offer. That's going to happen during that time. Uh, for Deerfield, that's February 10th and 11th. Also, I forgot to mention that um, generally when our presentation is in person, we hand out a hard copy of the program of studies that Mr. Nixon and I continue to refer to. Um, however, your child will be coming home with it uh, either this week or next week because the hard copies have been given to the eighth grade counselors so that they can give them out to your students. Uh, if you uh, would like though, you can certainly go on our website and there is a link that has the program of studies on there. And the students have an opportunity to um, polish their course recommendations up and until March 25th. So on February 17th, after the conversation you have with your child, we will say, here is the course selection based on your student's interest in academic placement. And then they have they can make any changes up and until March 25th. Fifth. After then, uh, that time, we will begin building the master schedule based off of um, each student's collective interests and requests. So just to kind of put everything um, into a scheduling perspective, a traditional ninth grade schedule, um, unfortunately students beginning freshman year don't have too much flexibility in their schedule due to some of these requirements, but every freshman will take an English, every freshman will take a math, um, that be algebra one, algebra two, geometry, pre-calculus, calculus, depending upon where they currently are at in eighth grade and how they're doing um, will determine their placement for next year. The history that students will take is world history and culture, the science is biology, health and physical education, again, like Mr. Nixon said, every year they'll take it. World language, Spanish, Italian, um, American Sign Language and French, and um, any electives, they can take up to four. So four meaning uh, a total of 10 credits in electives. So how really to prepare? Uh, 
for starters, we're doing a great job by being here tonight, just gaining an overview. It's really important to review that hard copy of program of studies or the, the one that's posted on the GL website. Watch the course selection presentation. The link is here, um, and as well as it's posted on all of the homepage websites. It was also provided in the individual meeting request of your appointments. The link for that video is there. It's the high school counselors giving a basic presentation um, and showing each student how to walk through and achieve um, selecting their uh, course selection through PowerSchool. Make sure that you and your children are familiar with the sequence events. So English one, English two, English three, um, you know, what type of academic level they're interested in, as well as perhaps where they see their self getting to in their sophomore, junior, senior year. Um, in the event that you or your child should have any questions as it relates to the academic placement for students, so freshman year, there's the academic level and there is the honors level. If, if uh, your child believes that they should have a different placement or have questions about that, make sure that they speak with their teacher before they have the meeting with the high school counselor. Also, this perhaps is some of the, um, the trickiest to do is choosing those 12 electives. So again, it's four top electives and 12, um, eight alternate electives. So in the event that your child doesn't get the top one, two, three, or four, um, they would be interested in taking any of those additional alternate electives. Meet as a family. We really try to, the past few years, make this an inclusive process so that parents feel like they're more involved and um, we can have the student, the child drive the process, but uh, it often helps when the parents are supporting and ensuring that students are meeting their deadlines and students are following up and asking questions to the right people if they need. Dr. Janosko, just checking in. Did, did, we, did a couple slides advance too fast here or we're okay? I think we're good. Okay. Go to the next slide. Great, and so the next step, so looking at big picture for the remainder of this school year, uh, January, February, again, is what we've been talking about, starting that course selection process. In April, students will be um, hopefully uh, brought up to the high school and that's nothing that you have to facilitate or actually really worry about. It's more of them taking a field trip up and having a presentation, meeting teachers, meeting peer leaders, getting a tour uh, and hearing from the administrators about um, being a GL Highlander. In June, students will receive a tentative schedule. Um, by schedule, that means actual, you know, periods in the day and courses and when things would fit. And we have an opportunity for students to really um, acknowledge if there's any errors that, that um, need to be fixed. And then in August, through PowerSchool, they will be notified to go in and check their final schedule. And that will be after all balancing happen happens and all courses are finalized before the first day of school. So to go over what the um, New Jersey State graduation uh, assessment requirements are, um, students are assessed in both language arts and math, and what the current um, requirements are for the classes of 23, 24, and 25. We share this with you because the specific requirements for the class of 2026 is not available yet. We anticipate it will look very similar to this though. So we want to share with you in advance a little bit about what this might look like. Uh, this year for the first time, 11th grade students will be taking um, New Jersey graduation proficiency assessment, um, which uh, all juniors will take across the state of New Jersey. Um, if students do not meet a certain proficiency score on that assessment, there are other pathways available to them as you see here um, through language arts or mathematics. Several of these assessments are assessments that we make available to students um, within the school, but some of these assessments are also assessments that students might take independently and then their results will be reported to us. One thing that's important to note, if a student doesn't meet the proficiency score through the NJGPA, um, they can use one of these pathways provided that they sat and took the NJGPA. Students must take that assessment. And then finally, if students aren't able to meet the 
um, graduation assessment requirements through one of those first two pathways, uh, we offer a portfolio appeal process, which is the third pathway available to students. Um, and essentially students would be enrolled in a course, work with the teacher in language arts and or mathematics um, and demonstrate proficiency through uh, the creation of a portfolio of um, work that demonstrates uh, their ability um, to meet a certain criteria in language arts and in math. There's a wonderful picture of our school counselors. If you haven't, if you haven't had a chance to meet these, these great folks yet, you'll get a chance to meet them really, really soon. They will be very, very important part of helping your child schedule um, not only their courses their freshman year, but as they transition all the way through high school. Um, you can see we have our wonderful um, department pet ocean in the picture there as well. Um, so this is a great group. Make sure you get a chance to know them. So class of 2026, your journey begins today. Hopefully this overview uh, was helpful and helps you understand a little bit about what's coming up and what you can expect but also uh, what some of the specific requirements are to help you on your path. So with that in mind, we are happy now at this time to answer any questions that anybody might have, um, either about things that you may have heard within the presentation, or perhaps something that you wanna learn a little bit more about that you did not hear in, um, here in the presentation. Ah, good question. What is Project Connect? Sure, so Project Connect is an interdisciplinary approach um, that's available to freshmen um, that really helps freshmen um, have more of a group and project-based approach, but also um, if you've ever heard the question that is often asked, like that people hear about a lot of things that are done for, you know, the kids that are perhaps in honors programs or there's what are, what's done for the kids that might have certain learning needs. Um, what do you ever do for that group that kind of, you know, maybe is on the border of some of those levels. That's the plan for what Project Connect is to try and help um, advance some of the skills that some of our students have to help every student be the best that they can be. If you think Project Connect is something that you might be interested in for your student, we highly encourage you to connect with your child's eighth grade counselor. Ask a little bit more about it. They'll be able to let you know based upon their past experience if Project Connect is something that uh, would work really, really well for you. I see the question here. Yes, it is only for freshmen. Thank you, Dr. Janosko. Is the add drop schedule the standard one used or only in place during COVID restrictions? The add drop schedule. Um, so I, I'm not sure necessarily what you mean, but if the, the course selection process, um, that process actually two years ago, we started that process um, for the students to be able to go online and go through PowerSchool and select their courses online. So that's us moving in a progressive, more electronic manner. And that was uh, pre-COVID. I hope I answered that question. Please elaborate if, if I didn't. See, one of the next questions here is, is to give some more details on electives, how many are needed by graduation, elective focus, uh, STEAM, theater, et cetera. Um, sure, we can certainly elaborate a little bit more on electives. Um, so there are, there is a, and I'm gonna see if I can get us back to one of our previous slides here to help us out with some more of this information. There are specifics that are required for graduation. Um, and if you see right here, Students need to specifically have um, 2.5 credits in financial literacy, um, which could be intro to economics, could be business management, uh, for example. Um, they need five credits or two elective courses in visual and performing arts. And then they'll need one course, 2.5 credits in 21st century and careers. Now, this is the minimum requirements uh, for credits that students need to graduate from high school in the state of New Jersey. One of the great parts about our schedule is that students can um, register for up to eight classes and 41 credits each semester of high, um, each year of high school. Uh, with that in mind, students can graduate from Governor Livingston High School with 164 credits. Um, so obviously 44 credits above the minimum. Uh, we encourage students to take above what that minimum is to take additional 
um, electives and we have different electives in different areas. So depending on what your child's interest or focus might be, whether it could be um, business, whether it could be in theater, whether it could be in music, um, anything like that, whether it could be in um, social studies, there are science electives, there is uh, electives that help you explore diversity. Um, we have a lot, a really, really robust elective program. Dr. Janosko, correct me if I'm wrong, by last count, I believe we're over 80 elective choices that students could pick from at some point in their high school career. Um, so there certainly is a robust, um, robust uh, program of elective courses that your child could choose from. Correct. And we, um, um, like we had spoken to about before, we really open all of those elective options, of course, um, taking in consideration prerequisites. That's how we build our master schedule. So really based off of the number of students and requests. I see I'm going to follow up with uh, the question with regard to the COVID schedule. Um, so for clarification, um, it was skipping a class every day. So A, B, C, D, E, F. Do you want to answer that one, Mr. Nixon? Yeah, which um, I'm so it's the, it's the, I, I, he's asking about the rotate and drop. So um, mm -hmm. is the rotate and drop only because of COVID or no? No, no, the, the rotate and drop schedule is something that was put in place at Governor Livingston High School for well over a decade now. Uh, I, I started at Governor Livingston in 2012, and, and it was in place prior to that. A lot of other high schools have, have gone to that as well. And, and one, of the, one of the great parts about that is it, it gives the opportunity for variety. It gives the opportunity for some longer course blocks, 56 minutes each, um, and then you know, as well as you know, some of the expanded opportunities with the open lunch and different things like that. So no, that uh, this current schedule has nothing to do with COVID. This is our uh, this is our schedule at the high school, um, regardless of whether we have a pandemic or not. There's a couple of PC questions I see that continue to come up. Um, in the event that your teacher, like one of your teachers, recommends you for a PC class, you have to take all of the PC courses. So that means PC history, world history, PC English, PC algebra or geometry, PC science. Uh, you can, in the event that you your child is recommended for PC, you would have to make the decision either to stay in all PC or be removed from PC completely. You can't have like a couple of PC classes and, and a couple of not. They kind of operate like a cohort of students. So um, can't really uh, pick and choose. So if you have specific uh, Project Connect questions uh, um, as it relates to, you know, how does my child fit? And it's kind of like in between that academic and honors. I would suggest reaching out to Miss Lori Scott. I'll put her email address in the chat. She actually is in charge um, of P uh, Project Connect and she's um, also one of the supervisors. So she might be able to help you kind of make that decision or your child make the decision, the best decision. Again, we only offer PC for freshman year, so um, it's a little bit unique. Think some, uh, some of the things I'd like to point out here, there are, there's a wide variety of, of questions that are going through here. Um, I want to point out that the focus for this evening is on scheduling and the scheduling process for incoming freshman students. Um, if you have other questions about the high school, culture at the school, different things like that, feel free to um, you know, reach out to one of the administrators or myself uh, specifically. We're happy to have those conversations. Um, there was a question specific to scheduling here that asked, why are some of the electives not available to all students? And uh, that's a very, very good question. Um, Dr. Johnson, you wanna talk about that and some of the prerequisites sure. that we might have for those courses? Yeah, so I would definitely say, um, look at the program of studies and see some of the prerequisites. So uh, some of the classes are not offered to freshmen because they have to complete the, the initial prerequisites. So for instance, uh, intro to woodworking, you have to take that before you can take advanced words or before you can take CAD. So um, the only classes that would be available to a freshman would be intro to work, woodworking and advanced woodworking. Uh, also, uh, if you look at um, like advanced human behaviors, for instance, that class is only offered to juniors and seniors because the prerequisite is uh, freshman and sophomore history and English completion. So if you look at, once you get into the program of studies, there's an explanation and description of every single course, but at the very top in italic, um, italicized, it says prerequisite. So what is the minimum that we are looking for? So hopefully that helps. But any um, course that's um, uh, 
uh, prerequisite any introductory course in terms of like electives, they are all available to, to freshman students. Okay. One of the other questions we had in here was, do students have the same guidance counselor for all four years of high school? And the answer is yes. And we want our, we want our guidance counselors, uh, our school counselors to, to know our students well, to get to know what their interests are, to get to know the family. Um, and, and so this way, by the time it comes to help guide that student to make their, uh, their college or career choice, uh, the counselor knows the student very well, knows the family very well, and has had a lot of conversations and a lot of meetings. Um, hopefully that supported that student over the course of their four years at Governor Livingston High School. Uh, Dr. Janosko, there is, there is a, a question um, here. 21st century in this slide says two and a half credits, but elective handout says we need to take five credits. Could you clarify? I think Dr. Janosko may have froze. Um, I have to take a look at that and get back to you. This, what, what this demonstrates right here is the 120 credit minimum requirement for the state of New Jersey. I would have to take a look at that handout and get back to you, but um, I see. Uh, I just back. froze. I can jump in. I, I see what the question is. Correct. The graduation requirement minimum here is not accurate. Thank you for the catch. It is 100% five credits of visual performing arts, five credits of 21st century and career, and then the visual liter uh, financial literacy is uh, 2.5 credits. Good catch. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions related to the scheduling process for our uh, class of 2026? So I see a good question. When does PowerSchool open for entering the elective selections? I see business management listed under both 21st century and financial literacy. If a student takes it, does it meet the requirements toward both? Great questions. Uh, so as of right now, actually PowerSchool, if you go into your site as a student, PowerSchool Access, on the far left-hand side, uh, you will see uh, course registrations and you will be able to go in and see your, uh, your recommendations based off your students. Uh, you are getting a jump start. This is wonderful because you're also going to learn about this access in uh, your classroom this week. Uh, business management does meet either the financial literacy or 21st century life and career. So it doesn't meet both. It can mean it can meet either or. So let's say you wanted to use business management for your financial literacy because you took intro to woodworking and you took you took computer science. Um, perfect, you've met your, your minimal requirements. Or if you want to take personal finance to meet your financial literacy, you can use business management and computer science to meet your 21st century life and career. Um, some other questions here. If, if you take PC, can you take honors courses as well? So you wouldn't be taking honors courses uh, during your freshman year, um, unless perhaps in world languages, Dr. Janosko, if you were uh, part of the PC program, but students from our PC program typically have gone on to honors courses or even AP courses um, as, as they go through high school. And I see another question here. Is it typical that college admission requirements may be higher than state New Jersey requirements? For example, only one year of a foreign language seems low. Uh, we do encourage uh, students to absolutely go beyond the minimum requirements identified by the state of New Jersey. And in fact, when we meet with College admissions counselors, they often share that um, a student's transcript and, and the progression of that transcript is one of the key components, if not the key component that they take a look at when considering admissions. Dr. Janoska, do you want to talk more to that? Yeah, so um, this, again, this presentation is um, set up so it is the, the absolute minimum that's necessary for um, high school graduation. However, every student is individual and that's why there's individual meetings every year with the counselor. Um, the minimal graduation to um, requirement for language to graduate is one year. If you are college bound, a minimum of two years at a consecutive language. If you are interested in maintaining, depending upon, um, you know, the level of interest, the level of rigor, uh, potentially the career major interest, you uh, would look to take um, three to four years of the consecutive language. 
So you are correct. One year is the minimum, and, and we certainly suggest more depending upon the goals of the student. Uh, there's a question, are there any specialized courses targeted, uh, targeted for students with strong interest in STEM subjects? And there are, if you think back to the uh, slide we showed before about our STEAM Academy, um, the student doesn't necessarily have to um, show interest or be part of the STEAM Academy to enjoy courses that are, um, that are taken through there. So um, there are an awful lot of courses in that area that are outlined in our course of studies as well. Um, there's a question, do the counselors serve as the college counselors as well? Yes, our counselors attend college admissions visitations um, in person, virtual, uh, uh, all of the time, all year round. So they are very um, up to date with anything as it relates to college admissions. So including FAFSA, scholarships, different campuses, different types of schools you know, two year, four year, et cetera. Um, they are the, and, and essentially that's just, that's one of the biggest pieces why it's important that the counselors maintains with the family for four years to really get to know the student, to work with them on their post-secondary planning. Uh, Dr. Janosko, quite, there's a question here specifically about um, when putting in all the required courses into power school, that mm -hmm. the total credits goes above the limit and doesn't allow for the student to submit the registration. Uh, only five of the electives are allowed in there. Anything you could share related to that? Yeah. So um, I would say if if that's what you're doing right now and you're stuck, I would say um, best case scenario is find the minimal to make sure that you can um, check your pencil and submit because it's not like you're saying, I'm done, this is my final request. You're going to meet with a, uh, with a high school counselor and really finalize that. What my assumption is that what's probably happening is when we say 12 credits, if you select, let's say, chorus or band, that takes up five credits in itself. That's actually considered two of the four classes. So if you put chorus or band, something like that, and you put another five credit course as your electives, you have fulfilled the, um, the top requirements. And then you need 12 credits of, alter, I'm sorry, eight classes of alternate electives, right? Um, if you select chorus or band for an elective and you choose two other 2.5 credits, that will meet your requirements. So in terms of uh, five electives, it's not necessarily five electives if you're if you're requesting a course that's worth five credits. So again, what I'm saying is if you feel like you're stuck, put the the maximum amount of electives that allows you to hit submit. And then when you follow up with your counselor, just go through with them and say, you know, I've done my English, my world language, my history, my science, and I've got, you know, four electives. And it's not many letting me select another one as a top. Again, chances are it's it's matching the amount of credits. So don't worry, it's okay your counselor will figure it out with you. Great. Oh, got it. Awesome. Got it. <laughs> so thank you there, Dr. Janosko. Um, I think we got through the majority of the questions that were related to scheduling and the scheduling process here. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody uh, who was able to join us here this evening. Um, obviously more questions may come up as you go through the process. Um, understand that's, that's what we're here for. We're here to help. Um, please reach out to your child's uh, school counselor. Um, reach out to Dr. Janosko or myself. We're happy to get answers to any of your questions that you may have. Um, it's this way we can make sure that you are as supported as you can possibly be um, as you transition to Governor Livingston High School. So uh, on behalf of everybody that was here this evening, thank you, Dr. Janosko, for, uh, for your great work tonight. And uh, thank you, Mr. Scarra, for helping us through this as well. And, and thank you to all the parents. We thank wish you all the best of luck. And uh, we look forward to seeing you up at Governor Livingston High School next year.